Chandrayaan-3 was meant to be India's proudest moment, a bright marker of India's rise in space. It landed where no one else had dared to go. The moon's shadowed South Pole, cold, ancient, rarely touched by light. The first images felt like a victory parade. The first soil scans sounded like music. Then the noise faded, the room got quiet, the whispers began, and soon a warning took shape. This is not science fiction. This is not a prank or a rumor. This is a story about data that did not fit, about a material that makes physics bend, and about something stranger under the ground. Chandrayaan-3 did the impossible, but it may also have opened a door we are not ready to walk through. ISRO launched Chandrayaan-3 with a promise. It was a comeback after the heartbreak of 2019. Chandrayaan-2 had missed its mark near the end. This time, the margin for error was zero. The Vikram lander flew true. It touched down with quiet grace near the South Pole, in a region colder than Pluto, in shadows that have lingered for billions of years. No other nation had planted its feet there. India did, and the world applauded. Why risk the South Pole at all? Because for decades, it was the Holy Grail. Radar hints of hard ice, dust rich in silicates, metals like magnesium and aluminum, maybe even clues to a deeper mystery. But the terrain is hostile, the light is tricky, the cold can kill machines. Still, the team pressed on. Isro aimed high, and it worked. Early data brought smiles, frozen water, mineral profiles, Useful metals for future bases, a blueprint for living off the land. But beneath the headlines hid a darker note, a result that never made the press briefings. The rover Pragyan crossed the powdery regolith. It fired up its cutting-edge spectrometers. The goal was simple, identify what the soil is made of. What came back stunned everyone. There was a substance no one could name, nothing like it in any Earth database, not in known lunar samples not in meteorites. It did not reflect light the way it should. It swallowed radiation like a sponge. Sometimes it seemed to bend the signal. Sometimes it was scattered like a mirage. One engineer said it felt alive with energy. It drank light. It warped readings. It broke the rules. Physicist Michio Kaku called it a terrifying anomaly. His point was sharp. If it formed by chance, then material science is wrong. If it did not form by chance, then someone put it there. Nature or design. Both answers carry shock, and both demand new questions. That alone could have triggered crisis meetings, but it was only the start. After the surface scans, the team turned on the ground-penetrating radar. The instrument peered under the regolith like an X-ray. The screen lit up with something no one expected. A hollow void sat several meters below, but it was not random. Straight lines appeared, angles repeated, grids echoed across the dark. It looked less like caves, more like plans, quiet geometry under ancient dust. Kaku reviewed the early frames. He used hard words, metallic, organized, deliberate, likely ancient. The void was not small, it was vast, big enough to hide a small city. Then the temperature sensors twitched. Thermal readings rose and fell with no sun. The moon is thought to be geologically dead, but here, heat pulsed in cycles, as if a system were breathing below the ice. Was it leftover heat from strange materials? Was it a working machine? Was it an artificial structure still alive in the dark? For the first time, people in white coats asked the unthinkable. Did we find an ancient base? Was it alien? Or could it be a forgotten human site from a past we do not remember? The questions felt unreal, yet the graphs were right there. Days later, the rover began to misbehave. Commands were lost. Packets came back corrupted. Movement grew sloppy and odd. Isro told the world it was likely stress and dust. Off the record, some were not sure. One engineer said the failures began the moment Pragyan passed over the deepest point. Another said the unknown material made the local field go wild, as if the ground itself was jamming the rover. Then came silence. No ping. No data. Nothing. This was more than a broken wheel. It was a mystery wrapped around a discovery, wrapped around a warning. If the void below is old and still active, every meter we move may flip a hidden switch. Kaku urged caution. He called for a global coalition. He said no single nation should go deeper on its own. His warning was blunt. We may have touched something meant to sleep. 
As news of the blackout spread, other governments turned their eyes to the pole. The trio of findings set off quiet alarms. A material that eats light, a geometric void, a sudden loss of contact. It triggered security protocols built for nuclear events. Space agencies pivoted their eyes in orbit. NASA, CNSA, ESA, all pointed high-resolution assets at the landing zone. Whispers said American military satellites saw an odd burst in the radio spectrum hours before the line went dead. Chinese officials, worried about spillover, asked for emergency access to ESRO's raw logs. OSA held a quiet call with NASA and CNSA. US sensors saw a brief EM spike near the site, minutes before Pragian went dark. Could the anomaly reach beyond the moon? Could it nudge COM satellites? Could it trip the GPS timing? Even shape the ionosphere or the magnetosphere? No one knew. In closed door meetings, a new word appeared on slides. Containment. The mission's scope shifted from research to response, from open data to need to know. Then a strange twist arrived. A small team of archaeologists and astrophysicists compared the radar geometry to ancient Vedic star maps. Their match was eerie. The grid beneath the South Pole looked like sacred patterns in old Indian texts. Mandalas that line up with cosmic math. Coincidence. Convergent math. Or a thread that runs deeper than we admit. Dr. Rakesh Verma, a scholar of Sanskrit cosmology, said the ratios lined up with a gate described in the Rig Veda. A symbolic portal to the realm beyond the dark sky. Mainstream scientists pushed back, but the echo would not go away. Across campuses and labs, people began to whisper. Maybe the ancients knew something about the moon's true nature. Maybe we are only now catching up. More fuel hit the fire. New files appeared online, masked by proxies, sourced, they said, from inside Isro. The documents claimed Pragyan scanned samples with traits no one had seen before. Not just unknown compounds, but materials with bizarre photonic behavior. One memo called it photonic negative, a material that absorbs light across visible and infrared bands, a thing that can bend or cancel fields around it, shielding not just from sight, but from probing energy, the kind of stuff you would use to hide a structure in plain view, to make a vault vanish, even to smart sensors. Another line used a colder phrase, optical dark matter, if that term holds up, then the South Pole holds something that turns physics sideways. It interacts with light in ways our textbooks do not cover. It could cloak a structure from any scan. It could hide a vault for ages. If such tech exists on the moon, then our models are not wrong. They are simply too small. The leaks went further. They mentioned a lattice that might be artificial. They spoke of metastable phases, states that hold until a small push flips them. They hinted that the heat pulses and the radar echoes rose in sync, as if something below was sensing the rover above, as if the system had noticed us. None of it is confirmed. All of it is unsettling. In response, quiet plans formed. Joint verification, shared telemetry, a no-drill policy until safety is proven, standoff mapping with long arcs and low power, a freeze on unilateral moves in the polar shadow. The idea was simple. Learn without waking anything up. Map without touching. Watch without pressing the old buttons. With the world watching, Chandrayaan-3 fell quiet in the shadows. The worst question was not what we found, it was what happened next. What if the moon is not just a rock? What if it is a container, a vault for tools or knowledge from a time before our records? What if our probes tugged on a lock? What if the silence is not failure, but a warning? Kaku ended one interview with a line that chills the room. There are things buried in this universe we were never meant to touch. And now, we may have touched one. The moon did not answer. It only kept its cold breath. Chandrayaan-3 should have been a clean milestone, a banner of hope, a careful step towards living beyond Earth. Yet what it found feels less like triumph, more like a threshold. What if the South Pole was not ignored by chance? What if it was avoided on purpose? What if, under the cold and the dark, something ancient waits, silent, buried, watching, not a message, not a beacon, a question, will they come again? We built a machine, 
We crossed space. We touched a place that does not want to be touched. And in that moment, we lost something. Not just a rover, but control of the story. Now, scientists go quiet. Satellites pivot. Physicists trade theories for warnings. One fact remains. We were not the first to arrive. And we may not be the only ones watching. So what do you think Chandrayaan-3 truly found? Ancient technology? A freak of nature? Or a relic from something not of this Earth? Tell us in the comments. Share this video if you believe this mission did not end a chapter. It opened one. Bigger than a nation. Bigger than the moon. And do not forget to subscribe. The sky is not silent. It only speaks in ways we are just learning to hear.